Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of T-365. Today's episode, we're talking automation, leveraging Microsoft Power Automate and the Pax8 API. It's often the case we have a lot of repetitive tasks in our organization, like user onboard, offboard, and you're doing a lot of repetitive tasks in Pax8, like incrementing and decrementing subscriptions. Additionally, you may have a lot of time-consuming efforts when it comes to invoice reconciliation if you're billing out of an ERP tool that Pax8 doesn't natively integrate with today, like QuickBooks Online. So in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to set up the connection between Pax8 and Microsoft Power Automate. So hopefully you can start to build a lot of automation around these workflows and create interoperability of data to these other third-party applications. As always, if this content is helpful, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. But let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so before we get into the Power Automate workflow, we are going to talk prerequisites just so I don't waste anybody's time. You need to know what you have to have in order to get this to work. On the Pax8 side of the house, it is free to leverage their API as a partner. So all you have to do is a primary partner admin or partner admin within their ecosystem. Go under the tool section on the left hand side, click on partner shells. And from there, you'll have the partner API as a designation or selection from the drop down list. Once you fill out the information there, you'll have access to go ahead and generate a client ID and secret. You can always find the Paxit API documentation up in the right hand corner where the question mark is in that drop down. And additionally from there, if you click on your name in the right hand upper corner and click on user settings, you'll have a tab on this screen for developer applications and you'll be able to generate a new client ID and secret. These should be stored in a very secure location. I personally am storing mine in an Azure Key Vault, but you can additionally store them in other tools you may use today, like IT Loop, for instance. So on the Microsoft side of the house, we have premium level connectors we're using for the Power Automate flow, which does require premium licensing within the Power Platform ecosystem. Now, this licensing model is highly confusing, but I have a diagram up here, which I believe is the most simplified way to look at this. One of these licenses there will give you that type of access to the premium connectors. And on the lower end, it's $5 per license. So it's not exactly expensive in any regard there uh, for that. And additionally, if you're a silver or gold partner with Microsoft, you may be already getting these licenses as part of your IURs. So that's one thing I would check out there first. Additionally, the only other thing I have within the Microsoft ecosystem is an Azure subscription and Azure Key Vault which is essentially storing my Pax8 client ID and secret in a secure fashion. I use this just because I can call it natively within the flow because they already have a pre-built custom connector for Azure Key Vault. But again, you could be using another third party. The main thing is just not exposing the client ID and secret in plain text within the flow itself for security reasons. So with that, let's go ahead and actually dive into the flow. Okay, so I'm here within Power Automate. I just want to showcase a flow that I've created here, which is actually looking at the Pax8 subscriptions that I have for new commerce subscriptions with Microsoft to see if there's an upcoming NCE renewal. And so essentially here, it's looking at the current day, maybe adding some cushion there to give me some lead time in order to be able to evaluate these contracts that I have and adjust the subscription quantities as well too. And this is just leveraging the Pax8 API to do so. And I'm pumping all this information and actually creating a ticket within my Synchro environment as well too for that particular customer to say, hey, this person has an upcoming NCE renewal and I can give all the subscription information there. So this is just part of the power of what you have when you think about leveraging the API and something like Power Automate here to generate a lot of this information that's very manual today especially with a pain point like new commerce where we have different renewal dates potentially for all of our customers and all of their subscriptions. So this is personally saving us a lot of time here and giving us a lot of value that we can work off of. In here though, let's go ahead and go through the basics, which is going into creating a cloud flow. We're gonna create an instant cloud flow. We're gonna say manually trigger a flow. And essentially, I just like to do this just to test, but then obviously you can use different triggers and additional actions, maybe a recurring timer to facilitate a lot of the flows that you create. So I'm just gonna call this Pax8 example and we'll click on create here. 
Now, the one thing that I would typically recommend is that we go in and we create a custom connector here within the ecosystem here, which is to say that I create a custom connection for Pax8 and I handle authentication along with all the API requests that we're going to leverage there as well too. Unfortunately, Microsoft does not support the client credential grant type within that particular use case as I'm creating a custom connector. So we are unable to do that at this particular time. I've actually opened a case about that, so hopefully it's supported in the future. But the only downside, obviously, for us doing this is that we have to reuse or recreate the calls that we're making in each flow that we create versus using a custom connector, which is essentially storing all that information for us. But in any case, we can still facilitate this request by looking in here. And the first step I want to do is actually pull out my client ID in secret from my Azure Key Vault. So within here, I'm gonna go ahead and search for Azure Key Vault. I'm gonna select it as far as the connector goes, and then they have the pre-built actions here. One of them is just getting the secret. And in here, I've already created the connection to my Azure Key Vault environment, and I can see my client ID in secret here. Now, additionally, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this just so I have it understood within my flow at a glance what's actually going on so you can name this whatever you like but i'm going to name it client id just a pro tip here on the azure key vault if you're getting errors here about not being able to find the vault go under the connector section and edit it there that's where you'll be able to go ahead and basically select the vault sometimes it skips over that and, and creates errors for you there we'll go ahead and search for this again one more time and we'll select get secret again and again same process here but we'll just put in our secret value and we'll rename this to secret so this next step here we're going to go ahead and search for http because we're going to make an http request we're going to use this one here and notice how we have premium this is again where you need that premium level licensing to execute the flow from here from the drop down you can select a post request but the rest of these fields here is really just us leveraging the Pax8 API documentation to fill out the remaining fields. So let's pop over to the documentation now. So here we have our access token requests. And so the first thing that we want to do is basically get an access token so we can correctly authenticate and generate a token that we can leverage across all of the other endpoints and gather the information that we need. So within here, they have all the information that's required in the schema. And they also have the actual request here in the drop down, And you can see it's a post request and we have the URL here. So we'll go ahead and copy that. We pasted that here in the URI. In the header section, I'm gonna go ahead and say content type. That's application JSON. So we're just specifying what the body's gonna come across as. And then back here, we're gonna go ahead and copy this value here, which is what we need to put into the body. And this is again, we had the content type here for our header that we just copied. And essentially, we're going to go ahead and paste that in here. Now for the client ID, we're gonna use our dynamic values that are generated from our uh, Azure Key Vault here. So in the dynamic section, you can see I have my client ID. I'm gonna go ahead and put in the value there. And then underneath here, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the value of the client secret. So this is again, the secure way of doing this. So we're not passing in the plain text values here. And this is essentially all we need to go ahead and generate a new access token. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and create a new step. And if we wanna go ahead and rename this to get access token. We're going to use another built-in connector or trigger action, I should say, which is parse JSON. The content is gonna come dynamically from our get access token body. And then for the schema, we want to generate this from a sample. This is again, what you can grab from the Pax8 documentation here. You can just copy it, come back over, generate from sample, paste that in there and click done. And this will automatically develop a schema based off of that. And essentially what we're doing here is we're getting access into grabbing certain values like our access token, which we can use to go ahead and make other calls to other endpoints. And I'll show that here in just a minute. So from here, we'll go ahead and click on new step. 
we're basically going to have an access token here now, which is our authentication to our other endpoints. So we can search again for an HTTP request, select that, go back here. And now we can make a call and I like to use one just for an example, which is just to get all of the company records here. So we go back to the documentation, we can click on companies and we can say, fetch a paginated list of the companies here. And here we have the ability to select that, come back over. And actually the first request is get, you're deciding your method here, you're pasting in that value as well. And then for the header values, we're putting in a couple different things here again. So content type again, And then down below, we're also putting an authorization here as well too. And what we're doing is we're saying this is a bearer token space, and then we're dynamically putting in our access token here as well. And if you click on to the text mode here, you can see this automatically is putting this in this JSON format, and uh, it's giving us this ability to see the uh, access token in quotes as well here too. So this is all we need. We don't need a body because this isn't a post request, just a get request. We can go ahead and save. And from here, we can go ahead and just test our flow. And this is again why I like to use the manually trigger a flow just so we can go through and we don't have to have something dynamic populating. I'll go ahead and click on continue and click on run flow. Okay, so our flow ran successfully. That took about 10 seconds to generate. But as you can see here, we have our keys being generated. We have our access token being retrieved, we're parsing out the JSON to get that access token, and then we're facilitating our get company request. And in the output section here, you'll be able to see the actual body, which is all of the companies in an array. And you can view all that information as well here too within the body section. So this is the basics, you know, this is allows you to create the connection allows you to generate an access token to then make other calls to other endpoints within the PAX8 API. So ultimately you can derive a lot of automation capability from this. And like the example I showed earlier, you can interact and push data between different tools that maybe you cannot do natively today within PAX 8. So that's everything I wanted to showcase for you guys in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, if you'll find this content helpful, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys, have a great day.